morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's uh, pray and let's get into this morning's study. Let's pray together. Uh, but Father, we thank you for your grace, uh, Lord, through the week, sustaining us and helping us, Lord, in all things. Father, even as we take time in your presence this morning, we uh, pray, Lord, that uh, you will go before us and uh, strengthen us, Lord, strengthen us from every side. And Lord, we pray the truth that we are learning will uh, greatly help us, Lord, in our spiritual journey and in our walk with you. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we've been talking about uh, faith in the ministry of Jesus. We saw how Jesus ministered and he always looked for faith. Even when there was no faith, he encouraged faith. Um, if you look at our notes, there are five, um, five points that we were able to discuss. I'll just share my screen for the benefit of the online students. So we've seen five uh, points there. And today we are going to look at the remaining five uh, points about how Jesus ministered. Basic, the basic thought there is, there is a need for faith for one to receive a miracle. What if there is no faith? Right? Uh, how did Jesus minister? All that we are going to look at today. So let's straight away go to point number six in our notes. The last we discussed was that natural elements can also experience, uh, natural elements can be affected by our faith. I don't know if any of us have had an experience like that, but uh, if there is a requirement, if there's a need for the work of God to be done and we have to command the natural elements, we can still have faith that God will help us. Um, we, we, may, we will talk about this you know, later on in some of the other courses as well. Uh, but remember that, remember that we can speak to natural elements. Now, point number six says, Jesus accommodated people outside of God's agenda. When we consider the Roman centurion, remember we, we said Jesus was impressed, impressed by his faith. He said, Lord, you say a word. My servant will be healed wherever he is. And Jesus said, wow, I'm not this kind of faith. However, this man was not a Jew. He was not a Jew. There is another person who's not a Jew or a Jewess, but she received a miracle from Jesus. And this is the Canaanite woman in Matthew chapter 15. Okay, she comes because her uh, child is oppressed to Jesus. And remember, we, we discussed that. She said, uh, Lord, you, you deliver my child. And Jesus said, I can't give the children's bread to the dogs. But ultimately, she receives her miracle. Why did Jesus even say that? No, both of these people at that point in time did not come under the covenant. There was a covenant that God had with the people of Israel, the Jews, the children of Abraham. He had a covenant. Have you all studied covenant? Not yet. Okay, so it's a promise. It's a solemn promise of God with man. And God had made a covenant with Abraham and his children um, that, you know, his the blessings would come to Abraham and his generations. When we consider the Roman centurion and this Canaanite woman, they're outside of the covenant. So technically, it's not applicable to them. So when we ask, why did Jesus say, I can't give the children's bread to the dogs? 
it's like jesus saying i have a covenant with the children you're outside of the covenant that's what he meant and she understood that she knew i actually do not qualify to receive a miracle or a blessing from jesus but what was her faith lord give me the crumbs i'm not in the covenant but even then you can do something for me that was her request okay it's amazing it's amazing how she could even uh, she could even think that jesus will do anything for her she didn't give up that's when jesus said i'm so impressed i'm impressed with your faith you take your miracle you know your child will be well so both of these people were actually outside of the covenant but what was the response of jesus yes uh, vinay what check check why didn't jesus tell the same to the roman centurion why did jesus why didn't jesus tell this to the roman centurion i can't give the children's bread uh the, he said that to the canaanite woman he said that to the canaanite woman the reason he said that was we would read that he he says i have come only for the house uh, of abraham i have only come for the children of abraham so he was saying by by covenant sure. i am bound to do the miracles only for the jews that's why he said that na uh -huh. hmm. why not to the roman soldier like ha uh -huh. to roman soldier he was impressed really he didn't mm. even question or yeah. didn't even ask yes like yes the, yes just the roman soldier came and said my servant is mm. this and uh, jesus without like he didn't say anything back to the roman soldier yeah yeah sure it's a it's a very good question actually and i may have to research a little to find the exact answer to that but uh, what i know as of now is that both of them were outside the covenant um yeah but why didn't he say what he said to the woman to the centurion so uh, let me get back to you on that yeah sure okay but the point that we see here is that god is gracious god is very compassionate he wants to bless the lives of people but he looks for faith are there any people in the old testament who were not part of abraham's generations and yet god blessed them yet god did miracles in their lives any names they have very good who else she is outside the covenant but she came in the she is even in the lineage right like in in that set ruth yes very good ruth anyone else god did a miracle rehab ruth yeah anyone okay naman the leper the leper as well rehab is from jericho jericho is a place so okay fine when there is faith can you imagine there were laws and rules that god had and there is this law of the covenant but god kind of made adjustments to that covenant to release his favor and his grace that speaks a lot about who god is and how he cares for people the covenant itself he he was willing he was willing to say okay fine yeah the covenant says this but but because of your faith i will do it for you so it depends on our faith if we have faith i'm not saying that the principles that god has laid down the laws that god has laid down he's going to bend the rules that's not what we are saying but 
in god's graciousness wherever it is applicable he even went to the extent of you if you say like okay move the boundary for this person because of faith okay so faith is like that faith is like it draws the miracle it draws the blessing from god it drew the miracle and the blessing for people who were outside also so that is the importance of faith jesus accommodated people outside his agenda but in response to faith now when people struggled with faith jesus encouraged them remember the man with uh, a child who is demon possessed he comes to jesus and you know, jesus says you need to believe and the man says lord i believe help my unbelief did god do a miracle for that man he did he did so god sees and god knows sometimes we are struggling but when we are honest we say god i don't think i have like that much faith or anything but i have faith i'm struggling and yet god did a miracle yet god did a miracle and we discussed you know mustard seed faith is all that god needs to do a miracle for us so when we struggle it's not like god says i'm not going to do anything for you you know how dare you um how dare you uh, doubt me how dare you question me i'm not going to do anything for you so though he knows our journey and our status thank god again for his grace that he accommodates us and he says okay i'll still do the miracle if you have little bit of faith i'll do the miracle for you okay peter is another good example when he started the journey with jesus when jesus said okay come right on the boat uh, peter is on the boat jesus is walking on the water and jesus says come peter immediately gets down from the boat and he starts walking on the water then he looks at the uh, you know the the surroundings and he gets scared he starts to drown when he is drowning does that show a lack of faith it does because still now he walked because of faith on the water now there's suddenly a lack of faith but jesus did not let him drown he extended his hands and said okay come back you know oh you of little faith why did you doubt so when is it that we start sinking when is it that we become helpless when we lack faith when we allow um doubt and unbelief to fill our hearts it may happen to us in our journey you know we start working on something and uh, uh, you know in between we we feel like why did i get myself into this this is too challenging so i'll just share with you something very recent that happened before you all joined we had um, the short term bible college here at um in the same campus we hosted it and there were uh, about 120 people or so who joined us they you know registered and they joined us for that course so when we were in preparation uh for the short term bible college we started it we were very enthusiastic you know people sent in their registrations and all we were very like excited we were like wow so many people it's amazing you know let them come from all over the country but when our team got together and we were working on the logistics that's when we were like oh my goodness you know how to host so many people some of the short term students are continuing with us so they know what i'm talking about um when we sat down and we were working things out on paper it was very challenging we were like okay what about the transportation what about the food what about the you know uh, accommodation how will we put them up the water the electricity at some point our team especially towards the launch of the short term bible college we were quite scared we were like oh no what have we gotten ourselves into 
how are we even going to do this because we've given our word now people are coming in one week everyone's going to be here most preparations were done but still it was very scary it was really scary that because we wanted to host it differently this time if we did it our usual way that that would be um, uh, you know it, it, that would still be possible but that was super expensive so we were creative to do it in a different way uh, but yeah i'm just sharing with you it was amazing to see god's miracles it was like when the students were graduating here a whole team the almost 83 people completed and the day they were all taking their certificates over here 83 people in one go like for me and our team we were like oh my goodness i can't believe it and they had a fabulous time it was one of our best short term bible colleges ever um but close up to the launch of the short term bible college we were having sleepless nights because logistics how how is it going to happen it it's too challenging like how are we going to make this smooth for everyone right but the whole time for me it was all about faith where is your faith i felt like god was saying where is your faith don't you think this can work out you know in in your budget and everything and so it was a challenge i i took it upon myself i said you know what i'm going to believe god we are going to believe god even our team we used to pray together and we'll be like god we don't know how how we're going to get accommodation for the girls how we're going to get accommodation for the boys but we are believing you and then we would just um you know take the vehicle and go look for places it was it was an adventure and probably one of the most memorable adventures of my life i should say uh, but on the other side of it i feel like god can do miracles if we believe if we believe uh and and so now when you know new things are shared with us and say okay why don't you guys do this why don't you guys do that why don't you expand the work like this like that we've seen god work in the past we have faith now yeah we can do it it looks impossible yes but we will pray we will be wise we will do our best we will work hard it's possible it's possible okay so i'm just trying to share with us in the journey of faith sometimes we start like peter yeah we can do it why after you've taken a few steps sinking <laughs> like oh no it's not practical why did i do this but thank god peter responded on the basis of what what did he respond on the basis of peter walked on water how did he walk on water by faith yes but where did that faith come from where does faith come from yeah the word of god why did it work out for peter because there was a word come if jesus didn't say come and peter tried walking on water will that work no it will not work there's got to be a come or an instruction or something surely from the lord and if the lord has spoken then don't worry peter you know some uh, preachers they put it like this what peter was walking on was the come it was that word that he was walking on if there is no word he can't walk same thing applies in our lives what is god saying is there a promise is there an instruction is there an inspired word hold on to it then that is what you and i can walk on if that's not there we will sink but once we start walking when the if you want to call it reality hits us then comes the challenge and what if we start sinking we see that god is still gracious jesus was gracious he pulled peter out so he god will pull us out but he still rebukes him he says oh you of little faith why did you doubt you started well but now you're shaking oh you of little faith why why did you doubt so we have to ask ourselves the question 
when things get challenging and i'm feeling doubtful why why is my faith becoming weak it should not become weak i have the word of god so i will continue on the word of god that's how you complete you've got to finish what god has called us to do okay so jesus helped during the time of unbelief do we struggle sometimes yeah we do we struggle to believe but we have to keep ourselves in the word keep ourselves uh, rooted and gr grounded in god's presence and rise up once again rise up once again all right so the eighth point here it says there were times when jesus healed and worked miracles independent of the individual's faith god requires faith to do most things faith on the part of man sometimes even when there is no faith miracles happen why because god is god god is compassionate and god is gracious and so he will move whether people are believing or not believing also there are a few examples in scripture there is a man at the pool of bethesda john chapter 5 he's lying down there and uh, he's waiting he's waiting for the waters to be stirred so there was this um thought that an angel would come and stir up the waters and once the waters are stirred up whoever goes first into the water will receive their healing so he was waiting even though he was waiting when the waters would be stirred up someone else would go that was his excuse jesus comes to him and uh, you know jesus asks him like okay um his his situation he kind of understands the situation but then jesus goes ahead and heals him so when we when we read this passage we will recognize that the man was not expecting anything from jesus maybe he never heard about jesus he didn't know who jesus was he was only making his excuse and saying i'm here because there's nobody to help me get into the pool but jesus is okay i will heal you and then he heals him how long is he there at the pool of bethesda for 38 years in this account there is no sign of faith from this man he is not believing in jesus and yet jesus heals him now we can ask the question why why did jesus do that or the gate beautiful acts chapter 3 a man is sitting there he's asking for arms peter and john are walking through there he is only asking for money but god gave him a miracle where is the faith the man is only asking for money he is not even believing that he can be healed but god healed him how do you explain this see god is god he is above all these um rules or if you want to say laws even so there are times when there is faith or no faith god will work there's a blind man in john chapter 9 he was born blind again there was no faith in that situation but jesus healed him born blind not expecting doesn't know who jesus is healing came to that man or there's a lady a widow in the place called nine and her son is dead they're taking the the body of of this young man she does not even believe that jesus can raise him from the dead but jesus looks at her has compassion and does a miracle for her so what are we saying we are saying that the holy spirit can move sovereignly and heal people do miracles for people now there are unbelievers um, you know some people whom we know they don't believe right so can they receive miracles from god yeah that's what it means even if they don't have faith we can pray for them god can move you could even say because of our faith or whatever but god is working god is working 
there are people who may come and uh, question question us question the work of god god does a miracle for such a person how to explain god is sovereign he can do a miracle for anyone even if there is no faith okay um again i don't know if any of you have experienced this but you know um, many things have happened even in my life sometimes we pray prayers and we think it's a small thing god may may not you know usually we pray with faith but then there are sometimes that we pray and we're not quite sure or we don't even have faith for it but even those things are it just takes place and you're amazed like wow god uh you are so good that you you've done uh you you answered my prayer or you you've given my desire so even when there is a lack of faith sometimes let me again repeat that sometimes it's it's an exception it's not normal exceptionally god can do a miracle even when there is a lack of faith all right are you all with me okay great yes yes please only big miracles can happen with so much faith in this like right now in at this time mm. uh suppose mm. like i have seen people like getting up from dead mm. okay but is this because of big faith or like things can happen with small faith at this particular time mm -hmm. yeah see this classification of what is a big miracle what is not a big miracle is a little uh, it, it's subjective meaning different ones of us have a different evaluation of what is a big miracle what's not a big miracle right um so that is one point second is how much faith do we need for the so called big miracle to take place do we need a bigger faith that's your question yeah. see how much faith miracle stake that gradation we we have no idea uh but i feel like mustard seed faith is like the qualifier for all miracles even to raise somebody from the dead or if if you can believe that much all miracles can take place yeah yeah you're not convinced but that's okay that's the only answer i have <laughs> see i do understand where you're coming from in all our minds um when when we talk about how to increase our faith we'll talk about the word of god see it depends for example for uh, two of us here we may have a common cold we may have a common cold and um, uh, we may also have another major sickness okay but for one person they operate in their faith and they're able to deal with both quite easily it's the same thing for them cold uh, any other sickness by the stripes of jesus i'm healed with that faith i'm able to operate now for another person it may be easier for them to believe that i can be healed of the cold but i can't be healed of the they may think i can't be healed of this bigger sickness because it's big however when you look at scripture jesus paid for all my sicknesses all my diseases whether it's a cold or whether it's a major condition but where is the problem problem is in my believing problem is in my believing so that's what i mean see how much faith do i need now this other person who is not able to believe um they need to work on their faith but for both of these people even if they had mustard seed faith on these matters it would work for both you got it but because of the mindset there's more work work in terms of spending time in god's word and raising their faith level to receive miracles for both of this so that's what i meant okay great yes yes prem um do we need the faith to receive the holy spirit god to baptize in the holy spirit god or to wait for jesus to fulfill the holy spirit god yeah we need faith yes we do 
We need faith for baptism in the Holy Spirit. But like uh, sometimes uh, uh, in the Bible and the sometimes other people like people says we need to have to wait for the God to fulfill the Holy Spirit. God. Uh, sorry, uh, can you say that again? Sometimes people are saying uh, we have to wait for Jesus to fulfill the Holy Spirit God with, mm. with us. Mm -hmm. So okay so uh, only if we wait we will get it yeah. like that mm, actually no actually no the reason is in acts chapter 1 jesus before he ascends he says you tarry or you wait for the baptism in the holy spirit so they are waiting they're waiting in the upper room that's the only place where the tarry or the waiting is applicable after Acts chapter 2, if you study, there are many instances where the Holy Spirit is poured out. So Acts chapter 8, you know, Philip goes to Samaria um, and he ministers there and then they send Peter and John to go. When they see that people are born again, they pray for them, for the baptism in the Holy Spirit and immediately, immediately people receive. Okay. Acts chapter 10. There's a family, a Gentile family, Cornelius and his family. Peter goes, he preaches. When he's preaching, people are born again. They believe when he's preaching itself before the altar call. Something unusual happens in Acts chapter 10. When they are still listening to the sermon without the laying on of hands, Holy Spirit is poured out on the people. Just now, a few minutes ago, maybe they became believers. Now they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's no, there's no need to wait. That's what I'm trying to say. Till Acts 2, Jesus said, wait. After Acts chapter 2, there is no need to wait. If we are born again one minute, we are, God is open to pouring out his Holy Spirit the same minute or the next minute. No need to wait. Uh, last night I read the sketch one picture. It's like, uh, I think, ads or something. Hmm. Marka. Mark, uh, I, I don't know, think so. Uh, what is so? Tell. Paul, uh, when Paul praying to the person, mm. uh, the, he received the Holy Spirit, God. So without faith, it, it's happened, I think. Without faith, um, I'm not uh, very clear on which passage that is. So if you can give me the reference, we can discuss later. Okay. Mm. All right. So yeah, we need faith. That's the point. Even if there is no faith, uh, God still works. It's quite amazing, actually, when that happens. But we must not make it uh, an excuse that it will happen anyway. Right? Okay, Sandeep is asking, can the God of our faith bring someone back to life? Uh, yes, Sandeep, that is uh, what Jesus does. I think it is John 11. Yeah, John... 11.45. Yes. John 11.25, where Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. So we must uh, remember that he is the God of resurrection. He's the God of life. In the book of Acts, we read he's the prince of life. So, of course, you know, he gives life. He can bring back people to life. So on the basis of the scriptures. Yes. Um, any other questions, discussions? Or we'll proceed. Okay. So, yeah, we are clear on this, that God still works. Nine. People came in faith on behalf of others and received for them. This again is quite clear. We've seen uh, the Roman centurion come on behalf of the servant.
we saw the paralytic man who was let down through the roof come on behalf of his uh, he, the people brought this man and jesus did the miracle it was the faith of the friends uh, that is being spoken of the woman who came to jesus for the deliverance of her child she came on behalf but did god do the miracle he did so how does that help us we can believe on behalf of others so people our friends our family members they are not believing and we may we may feel like okay then how will god do the work in their life you believe if i believe we who are ministering we believe the miracles still happen we can go to a place where nobody believes and yet when we pray miracles happen so on the basis of whose faith did the miracle happen not the one who received it but anyone else so that is you and me our faith so that's another reason why we must become strong in our faith and especially when it comes to ministry whenever we are ministering whenever we are going you know we are preaching we are uh, leading worship we are praying for people don't we will do our best to impart faith in others through god's word but even if even if they don't believe one requirement is as a minister of god i must be full of faith at least on the basis of the faith that i carry miracles should take place healing should take place answers to prayer must come okay so on jesus minister to others on behalf of other people's faith so we can carry that faith and even you know those who are parents maybe your children are away from the lord and you're feeling so bad or you know some of us siblings our brothers and sisters are not in the lord it's a struggle it's a big struggle but we are believing for them and it will work it will work because on behalf of our faith god will work in their lives okay so we must always keep our faith strong jesus point number 10 here was upset when there was little faith or a lack of faith so this is another thing to understand how does jesus react when there is a lack of faith does he say it's okay no problem you know you you get better next time wherever there was a situation like this the normal reaction of jesus is he was actually angry he was very upset oh you of little faith why did you doubt he asked peter you know when there was a storm and the disciples were in the boat also he rebuked them he rebuked uh, the disciples again he said where why are you fearful oh you of little faith where is your faith rebuke meaning scolding so what does that tell about jesus's expectation of us in our life situations jesus expects us to have faith when we are fearful and we say i don't know how this is going to happen or you know when we get into that mode it's actually quite upsetting for the heart of god and we can remember what he told his disciples you know oh you of little faith why are you fearful where is your faith why did you doubt those are the same things that he would tell us yeah there are many places in our notes we have a list of scriptures where jesus is asking all these all the same questions okay let's come to our um, chat section here and uh, sharmishta do you want to ask a question please unmute okay we're unable to hear yeah we'll get back here to our passage so uh, in matthew chapter 17 there is a okay no problem that was by mistake yeah uh, there is a passage where 
a man, his son is oppressed by uh, a demon and he brings his son to the disciples. And disciples are not able to cast out the demon. But later on, they take the same child to Jesus. Jesus casts out the demon. But what does he tell his disciples who are not able to cast out the demon? In Matthew chapter 17, verses 17 to 20, it's on page 25 in your notes. It says, then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Yeah, and then, of course, Jesus does the miracle and Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Later, the disciples ask him, they say, Jesus, why? What was the issue? What was the problem? Then he says, such a kind does not come out except through prayer and fasting. How does prayer and fasting help? Prayer and fasting helps our faith to increase. So what was Jesus actually trying to address? Because in verse 17, he said, faithless and perverse generation. So what is the issue? The problem is you couldn't do the miracle. You couldn't cast out the demon because of the lack of faith. And he also, he doesn't only say, faithless generation you know it's like scolding oh you don't have any faith but jesus also says perverse perverse means morally corrupt so it's it's like wow jesus why would you why would you rebuke the people with a lack of faith like this but it goes on to show us again faith is very important for god faith is something that he's looking for. The lack of faith. He's rebuking his disciples. Faithless. Where's your faith? There's no faith. Plus he's saying pervert, morally corrupt, equating with morally corrupt people of the world. Oh, it's a big rebuke. It, our faithlessness affects God that much. Okay? So that is why we've got to be serious about faith. Raising faith in ourselves. Increasing our faith. So Jesus is calling them. It's because you're faithless that this miracle could not take place. But thank God. He's also gracious. He says, bring the boy to me. He casts out the demon. And thankfully again, the disciples are humble enough to say, okay, Jesus, we failed. It's a failure on our part. Please tell us why. What is the problem? We want to learn. Then he gives them the answer. He says, you know what? The issue is your lack of faith. Prayer, fasting. Prayer and fasting. Will do what? It will help our faith. Faith will rise up. Faith will increase. You want to make, we want to make our faith intense, strong. Time in the word. Prayer, fasting. Okay? Uh, when we are fasting, when we are praying, Sometimes it feels like nothing is happening. Like, what is this? Nothing is happening. I'm struggling, but nothing is happening. But in the spiritual realm, Jesus is giving us a key here. He says, something is happening to our faith. The faith is rising up as we are praying, as we are fasting in God's presence. Faith is rising up. And then we will be able to step into the miraculous or the supernatural uh, because you know our faith has grown to that mustard seed level or beyond. But when there is a lack of faith, it's very upsetting for God. It even makes God angry when we lack faith. Okay, So that is the dynamics we need to understand. Now coming here to the last section, uh, we notice that unbelief limited Jesus from doing mighty works. There are two passages. I'm going to request uh, two students to take the mic and read them aloud. Matthew 13, 
One person can read that. Mark 6, another person can read, please. Matthew 13. Hmm. So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, Vinay, the next one. No, he could do he could no mighty works there, mm. except that he laid his hands on few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the vi villages in circuit teaching. Okay. So in both of these instances, why were the mighty works not possible? Because of unbelief. Unbelief. When there is unbelief, God is not able to work. In other words, we can look at it like this. Almighty God, it's strange. We've discussed this already. Sovereignty of God and the requirement for faith. It's like we are handcuffing God. God wants to work, but we are saying, no God, you can't work. We will not let you work. When there is unbelief. Is unbelief the same as doubt? Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. See, uh, doubt is like we believe in our hearts. The way we said uh, um, Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance. Right? Faith is the evidence. We believe. But doubts are when in our mind we are saying, how can it be? How will this happen? Like Mary. She received it. Be it unto me according to your word. But she had some doubts, but how shall how will this be? Practical, logical questions. Those are doubts. But unbelief is, God, you can't do it. You, you cannot do God. I don't believe you. That is unbelief. See, doubts are different. Unbelief is different. So when there are doubts, God can still work. But when there is unbelief, where we are dishonoring the power of God and we are saying, no, I don't believe. You can't do it. That, that is when... God will not do. God, though he can, he will not do. So that is unbelief. Okay? And we must stay away from unbelief. Okay, we've discussed a lot on the importance of faith. And I really hope that that forms a good foundation for us. So we'll look at this question here in the chat and uh, wrap up for now. John says, um, there were two different incidents wherein we prayed for two small kids, one suffering with cancer, another struggled with suicidal thoughts. A lot of godly people prayed, but both of them died. In these cases, both the parents are not non-Christians. How do we look at it? So why did this happen? Uh, there could be many answers. John, I know it's very difficult, very difficult to explain situations like this. But what we can say is that God's word does not change. When we have faith in God's word and that miracle doesn't happen, does the word of God change? It doesn't, right? It remains the same. But... Can our experience change? Okay, this time I prayed for somebody. They did not get healed or they passed away. I pray for another person later. Can my experience change? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah. Experience can change. Why? Because, see, we may be missing out on some things that we don't understand or we don't have. Um, in the area of faith, in the area of knowledge, in the way we're ministering, we don't know. There are many factors there, right? But as we are learning, as we are growing, we may also see many successes where people are healed, people are raised from the dead, okay? Because God's word is true. Now the experience of us as believers, we've got to raise our experience to the level or the standard of the truth of God. 
as we are doing we got to make that journey and you know it's really sad that yes sometimes we do fail we don't have all the answers for why we failed however it's a good thing to rise up again and uh, trust the word of god and press in to see those miracles happen yes divya no it's never the will of god for somebody to die or be sick and die in the sense uh, before their time before their time with the sickness more about this in uh, our course on healing and deliverance okay all right so let's stop here we've run out of time um maybe vipluk can you please pray pray yeah almighty heavenly father thank you for this wonderful day lord which you talked about the faith lord my father um to your word lord you spoke us thank you so much lord my father um help us to grow in faith more lord my father so that we could uh, we can able to understand your scripture more and more lord my father lord thank you for this day in name of jesus christ i'm praying amen 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 thank you thank you everyone god bless you